Joshua chapter 15. This then was the lot of the, of the tribe of the children of Judah by their families. Even the border of Edom, the wilderness of Zin southward, was the outermost part of the south coast. Now we're going to look at the tribes. We're going to look at their land. We're going to look at the drawing of their land, the border lines, the cities. And you can march Joshua 15, the word of God, the Bible, the word of Jesus Christ, the word of the Holy Spirit, the word of God the Father. You can march this into the United Nations and say, get your butt out of Israel and give it to them. If there's anyone that's saying, this is my land, this is, is the Israelite. There's no other land in this world, in this earth, on this planet, that anybody can say that this land is totally and for right mine by God, and that's the nation of Israel. And we are going to read a division of land that's been fought over for many, many years, B.C. and A.D. And in 2018, we can open up the Bible and say, we know who that land is. Now, the Pope and the United Nations may say Jerusalem is not Israel's. The hell with them because that's where they're going the bible says jerusalem is the people of israel now why are they not in the land why is it not their land because they're disobedience to god because they took their messiah and crucified him and did not repent of their sins and god is going to whip their butt during the tribulation period the great tribulation period called Jacob's trouble and then when Jesus Christ comes back what you see right here in the book of Joshua will be given back to the 12 tribes of Israel he'll know who they are he knows who they are now and any nation against Israel will be cursed and cast off into hell and those nations that do help the Jews will be allowed into the millennial kingdom it's all about one place in the world it's called about a land of Israel it's all about a city called Jerusalem and it's all focused upon Jesus Christ now we did two and a half tribes were disobedience chapter 13 rebellion they did not go in the land like God told them to do in chapter 14 we look at a man who was obedient 40 years 45 years he waited to get the land and he goes in there and says listen I'm gonna kick butt I want it and then the next land we look at happens to be Judah which is the line of Jesus Christ of all 12 tribes Judah is first why because Jesus Christ is first verse 2 and their south border was from the shore of the Salt Sea, the Dead Sea. And some of these places you can find them. You can roughly draw this out, with, sit down with a map, and you can roughly draw it. From the bay that looks southward. So there's a bay to Salt Sea. And it looks south. I never really looked at it, but there it is. Look on the map. And it went out to the south side of Malachabrim. Now I'm going to give you a warning for the next few chapters. My mouth is going to be twisted, tongue-tied, and I am not going to say these names right, and I don't think God would be angry with me. Matter of fact, what I've done so far is I've done what most Christians do not do. I have read every word of the Bible. And when you're reading the Bible for private, your own reading, just say, and just put your eyes on yourself and pass on this in, etc. You just let your eyes follow the words, all the words. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that breathes out of God. Now, you may not know how to say it, but at least put your eyes on it when you're reading. Give your mind a little, uh, that's what it looks like. And God is not going to remove a crown because you got it wrong. You'll re you will get a removal of crown if you don't read the word. <clears throat> and pass along Zin. That's a, that's a place in the Bible. Send it up to the south side of Kadesh Barnea, and pass along Hezron, and went up to Adar and fetched a compass. That's a circle. Compass is a circle to Karka. From thence it passed towards Azamun. And went up onto the river of Egypt. Now that's interesting. I'm going to put on this video a couple pictures. That is not the Nile River. 
And if you were to look at a map, Old Testament map, where Palestine is, where the Philistine land is, and where Judah is, there's a river there. And maps will show, it may not be a river, it may, I forget, a stream or something like that, but it is called the River of Egypt. And it's questionable where that river is. And you'll find some remarks in your Bible maps. That is not the Egypt, the river, that's not the Nile River in, in Africa. But if you're to find that it's at the south end, the Mediterranean Sea is, is it's, its mouth, and it runs, and that river just is the south border of the Mediterranean Sea and where Judah is. And it says, and the goings out of the coast where the sea. Now that's the Mediterranean Sea. And from the Mediterranean Sea, you will find this river of Egypt. Why is it called the river of Egypt? I have no idea. This shall be your south coast. So if you can find a map, and it's out there, it's hard. You'll find a river of Egypt, the brook of Egypt, the, the, that is the south. Of, you can go any further, you're out of Judah. And the east border was the Salt Sea. The Dead Sea. I mean, the Mediterranean Sea, excuse me. Because the Mediterranean Sea is salt. Oh, wait a minute, the Dead Sea. Even to the end, the east border was the east. east. Oh, okay, yeah, that's the Dead Sea. East, I got my direction wrong. The east border was the Salt Sea, the Dead Sea, even unto the end of Jordan. So the Mediterranean Sea and the Jordan River are two bodies of water for the east and for the west of the whole entire land of Israel. It's also a boundary line of the land of Judah. And the border in the north quarter was from the Bay of the Sea at the outermost part of the Jordan. Again, if you look at the Salt Sea, there's a bay there. And the border went up to, and it's, it's kind of hard to explain all this because not all the places are known. Some are, some are not. Beth Hogla. And passed along by the north of Beth Arbra. Huh? And the border went up to the stone of Bohan. Now, look, here's a stone that's got a name. Well, we don't we have names Stonehenge? Don't we have the mountain where those four presidents are? Isn't there a name there? So why do we give ourselves the credit, but we can't give the Bible credit? There's a rock or a stone in Israel. It's a boundary line. It's called the Stone of Moab. The son of Reuben. So here's a guy of the children of Reuben. He named the stone after his name. It's a landmark. And the border went up toward Deber from the Valley of Achor. And so northward. Now, if I'm correct, Achor was the valley that Achan was killed in. Let me check that real quick. Achan was... 726. 7, late. So 726, and they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day... So the Lord turned from the fierce anger of his anger, wherefore the name of the place is called the Valley of Achor unto this day. So here's a man, his grave, the valley, and look at verse 16. The tribe of Judah was taken. Achan was of Judah. So Judah, you get this land, and it's to remind you, you better obey God. So look at Achan in his impatience to get fame. He got fame. His tribe gets where he's buried. In the valley of Achan, Achor. And so northward looking toward Gilgal. That's a good name in the Bible. I mean, it's a name quite frequent in the Bible. That is before the going up of Adum which is on the south side of the river, and the border passed toward the river, to the waters of 
Inimish. And the goings out, therefore, were of Enrogo. That's, that's not a real famous place, but you do see it in the Bible. Okay, breath. The border went up by the valley of the son of Hinnom. I believe that's where they were killing their children. I think. See, I'm not perfect. Only God's perfect. I make mistakes. And I'll say things that could be wrong. On the south side of Jebusite. That's important. The same as Jerusalem. So this place of Hinnom and Jerusalem are in the same area. Now this is mentioned in Judah, but later on we're going to see that this Jerusalem belongs to Benjamin. But it's given in the name of Judah because Israel is going to split into two places. You're going to have South Israel, which is called Judah, and you're going to have North, which is going to call Israel. And Judah is so big, he swallows up the brethren that are in him. One of them is Benjamin. Why does he swallow up all the brethren that are in his land? Because two and a half tribes didn't cross over. Judah's land is so huge. Because two of them didn't take over. We'll, we'll look at that later. And we'll read it later. But right now, Jerusalem. So Jerusalem is marked in Judah, even though we'll see later on it's a Benjamin. And right next to it is the, son, the valley of the son of Hinnom. That's a bad spot. And the border went up to the top of the mountain that lieth before the valley of Hinnom westward, which is the end of the valley of the giants northward. So in the area of Jerusalem where we read about, there were valleys of giants there. And the border was drawn with a pencil, pen, whatever they use, from the top of the hill onto the mount, onto the fountain of the water of Nephita. Water is a living source. You need water. And went out of the city of Mount Ephraim, and the border was drawn to Baal, -ah, Baal, ah. There's a city given to Baal. Which is Kerchief Jerome. And the border in the border compass from Baalha westward unto Mount Seir, that's a place in the Bible, mentioned much, pass along the side of Mount Jerome, which is Shishon. So this mountain's name is, has two names on the north side. And went down to Beth Shemesh, that's another well-known name in the Bible, and pass on to Timnah. And the border went out unto the side of Ekron, well-known in the Bible, northward. And the border was drawn to Shekron, and passed over to Mount Bela, and went out unto Jabneel. And the goings out of the border were at the sea. That's the Mediterranean Sea, because what? And the west border was to the Great Sea. That's the Mediterranean Sea. Can't go no further. And the coast thereof, this is the coast of the children of Judah, round about according to their families. Phew, that's a lot. Take a little break here. And on to Caleb. Oh, look at he. He gets mentioned twice. Wow, he gets mentioned as one that... The, the ten, tri ten spies. He gets mentioned as being faithful, holy to God. He got his own chapter in chapter in Joshua 14. How many great, wonderful people can say there's a whole chapter about them? And unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, he gave a part among the children of Judah, so in this land of Judah, chapter 15, is Caleb's land. According to the commandment of the Lord to Joshua. God commanded Joshua, you give him that land. How's that? Even the city of Arba, which is Kirja Arba, the father of Anak, which city is Hebron. It's later on renamed by Caleb Hebron. And that's one of them popular names in the Bible. 
Now watch this. Remember over here in chapter 14, verse number 10 at the end. I am this day four score and five years old. I am 85 years old. He's talking to John. I'm 85 years old. Ready? Verse 14 of chapter 15. And Caleb drove thence the three sons of Enoch, Sheshuai and Ahalam and Talamai. The children of look at it, the children of the sons of Zillic, the, the children of this giant. Let's go back. I think it's Numbers 13. Numbers 13 30. And we're going to look at verse 29, verse 28. Number 13, 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities were, are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak, giants there. And the Amicites dwelt in the land of the south. That's where Caleb's, that's Caleb's Barnea. That's exactly where Caleb's going to get. And the Hittites and the Jebusites, we you know. That's Jerusalem. And the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea, Mediterranean or the salt, and by the coast of Jordan, could probably be the Dead Sea. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to become it. And the people said, We be not able to go against the people, for they are stronger than we. They brought up an evil report. So let's go back to Joshua, chapter 15, with chapter 14. This 85-year-old man in chapter 15, verse 14, steps up to the giants and the sons of his giant, and he kicks butt. I thought you couldn't do it. Look what it says. It says, Caleb drove that. An 85-year-old man by himself went up to four giants and kicked butt. And God says, you get the land. When's your eight other counterparts? I mean, you're, you're let's see, 10 other counterparts. What did they get? They got hell. They died and went to hell. Well, who's the other one? Joshua. Being faithful to God 40 and 5 plus years. God gave him the strength to go in there and to do what those spies said. Oh, we can't do it. And it would be funny if this account is read to those 10 men when they're standing at the great white throne judge who can't do it. Calls up one of the angels or somebody. says, Joshua 15, verse 14, please. And read it before the 10 men, before I cast them off in the lake of fire. Not only did Caleb do it, but he did it 45 years later. Isn't that a kick in the butt? Let's keep reading. Verse 15. And he, Caleb went up a mountain thence to the inhabitants of Deber and the name of Deber before it was Kirchhoff Sefer. So he goes in there and he kicks butt and he renames it. And what Caleb's doing is, hey, I'm conquering and I'm changing the name of these heathens unto a name reference of God in the Bible. And Caleb said, he that smiteth, he that smiteth Kajif Sefer, and taketh it, to him will I give Akasha, my daughter, to wife. Now what's he doing? Anybody gonna marry my daughter? He better be strong, he better be valiant, he better be hard worker, and he better not be like those ten spies that I went in the land with. He's gonna have to prove himself to marry my daughter. And Othniel, and he shows up much in the Bible, well, not much, but the son of Kenaz, the brother of Caleb. Kenaz is Caleb's brother, and I need help with family, and Othniel yeah, is, the son of so he's the son of Caleb's brother, that would make nephew. So here's a nephew, Caleb steps up, took it, and he gave him Machinash's daughter to what? He went in and beat butt, and he said, okay, here's my daughter. He put it out there. So look how it stays in the tribe. It stays in the family. Caleb, Kanez, 
and forget somebody's name here. All the all these families right here are keeping within what God said. You keep it in the family when it comes to that land. So they're obeying the Bible. And it came to pass as she, the daughter, came unto him that she moved him, you know, us and him, to ask of her father a field. She wanted more. And she lightened off her ass, and Caleb said unto her, What wood is thou? What do you want? Who answered? This is how she answered. Give me a blessing, for thou hast given me south land. That's the land where they all went in, the tribes. The twelve tribes. Give me also springs of water. And he gave her the upper springs and the neither springs. Again, the living source is water. We got to have water supply. And he gives it to her. And with these living springs of water for her family, for her animals, for the crops. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Judah, according to their family. Okay, here we go. Here's the cities. The utmost city of the tribe of the children of Judah, toward the coast of Edom, southward, were Kebzeel, and Eber, and Jagar, and Kenai, and Demonah, and Kedaniah, and Kedish, Hazor, and Ithnam. Ziph, and Telum, and Belial, and Hazor, there, there's two Hazors, get that, there are more than one city that has the same name, Bethlehem is named twice, and the Bible says when it comes to the prophecy of Jesus, alright, there's two Bethlehem of Ephraim, Hazor, Hadadath, and Kirioth, Kirioth, that's where Judah, that's where Judas is from. Judas, a man of Kirioth, comes from Judah. Hezron and Hazor, have we already seen that name? Hezron is Hazor. So here's three cities named by the same name, and one of them just happens to have two names. So I got a problem with this Bible name, this Bible city, this Bible person. Well, maybe it has other names. Don't you have a first, middle, last name? Doesn't a woman who's married have a first, middle, last name and her husband's name? So the Bible can do it, you can do it. Okay, 26, Emma, Emma, and Shema, and Moda, and Hazard Giddeth, Heshman, and Beth Pallet, and Hazard Shul, and Beersheba. Well, that's an interesting place much in your Bible. Beersheba is in Judah. That's the place where, where Abraham Dig that well. That's the place where uh, Hagar met the angel of the Lord. Bizajakaja, Bala, and Ayimum, Ayim, and Ezim, and Etolad, and Cheshiel, and Horma, and Ziglag. That's a famous one of David and uh, King Saul. Uh, Saul. Saul. Yeah, talk now. Forgive me. And Mad Mamaha and Shun Shuha. Man, you imagine writing some of these names on an envelope? Mahamama, Judah, and then the Zip Kuhau. And Leboth, and She Shalhem, and Anim, and Rimna, that's another one that's famous in the Bible. All cities are 29 with their villages. Oh, there's even more besides those. There, the villages. We're not even told what the villages are named. And in the valley, okay, here's the valley. Eshtol and Zora and Ashina and Zena and Enginimim and Tapa and Inimum. 
and Jarmuth and Adullam, Soko and Azekah, and Shepharim and Adethium and Gedera, and Gadarazim, 14 cities and their villages, and we don't even know what the name of the villages and how many villages there are. Dinam and Hadish and Megdal Gad and Delium and Mizpah, that's another one in the Bible, and Zechiel, that's not as often, but you'll find that again, Lachish, Bachthan, and Eglon. These are cities that are found in the Bible and they're in a valley. Scripture with scripture, study show they so for food unto God. And Kabum and Lebman and Kiddush. And Girdioth and Beth Dagon. Dagon. Beth House. The house of Dagon. What is that doing in Judah? Dagon's a Palestine God. We run into him later. With the Ark of God. That's interesting. And Nema and Mechida, 16 cities with their villages. Libna and the Aether and Ashen and Jephthiah and Ashenah and Nizab. Boy, when you get this far reading these names, you, you, your mind just goes crazy with these letters. And Kilai is Ekzib and Marsha. Nine cities in their villages. It's almost like Joshua's right. Uh, okay, this book, not, I don't want to go with the rest of the names. I don't know, maybe. Ekron and her towns and her villages. From Ekron even to the sea. All, okay, let's read on. And all that lay near Ashdod with their villages. That sea is the Mediterranean Sea. We are now in the land of Palestine. I mean, the Philistines. Ashdod with her towns and her villages, Gaza, Philistine, with her towns and her villages, that's where Goliath thrown. Onto the river Egypt, there it is again. That river Egypt, you find a map, is down where the Philistines are. And the Great Sea, that's the Mediterranean Sea, and the border thereof. So you see the PLO, the Philistines, is supposed to be Judah's land. Now I forget what that guy, he died during my time over there launching missiles into Arafat. That land is Israel's land. And the United Nations, all the nations around kept giving it to the Palestinians who would kill people and torture people. And not once did America stand up and say, you get your butt out of there because we're going to give it back to Israel. No, we're going to move. They, they put these temporary walls and they kept giving more land to the PLO, more and more land. And Israel was surrender land, according to what the Bible would say. You don't want to curse that Jew. You go over there as an American representative and say, okay, that land is Israel's land. We're going to draw out the lands using the King James Bible. And if anybody's in that land, doesn't be belong in that land, you got 24 hours to get out. We're going to put the Jews in there. The nation of England tried to do that. They said, this is your land. Uh, I forget, 1949, whatever. I'm not good with years. This is your land. And you say, where did they mess up? The Belfort Declaration, when they also gave land to the, to the country called Jordan. And then they came up with the first perverted Bible in their land. They came up with the King James Version, then they came out with another perversion of the Bible. I can't think of what the name of that one is. America went wrong she, when America came up with the American Standard Version. We started turning our tails against Israel. But we know where we are now. And that's a proper area of David and King Saul. And the mountains. Okay, now we got the mountains. Shamar and Jartin and Soko and Dana, Dana, whatever, and Jaxnath, and which is deeper. Oh, there's a mountain that has two names. Oh, wait a minute, isn't that the one over in verse 15? There is Caleb's right there in verse 49. The mountain. Caleb's land is mentioned again, verse 49. shown which is deeper. So Caleb changed the name. 
and Anab and Eshtoma and Enim and Goshen Bible name and Holon, Holon and Gilhan eleven cities with their villages see 52 Arab or Arab that's the first and last time that word ever shows up in the Bible it's an interesting name in Judah Arab and Daham and Eshram and Janam and Beth Tapa the house of Tapa Beth means house and Ep Africa and Humta Kirjith Arbor which is Hebron wait a minute I believe that is again over here I believe that is Caleb's land chapter 14 verse 13 look how many times Caleb in the reference of Caleb even if his name is not there he renames it and it's mentioned again and it's a mountain verse 48 and the mountain that 85 year old not only went and kicked five giants butts but he climbed the mountain on top of it Don't draw these Jews as weak little, short little people. I guarantee, with power of God, Caleb, which is Hebron, and Zior, nine cities, and their villages. Maon, Carmel, that's a famous place. Carmel is Judah. Ziph, that's another famous mountain. Juta, or Jutta. You know what also I find interesting reading? And I'll admit it's a sin. I'll put it in the blood of Jesus Christ. You know how I many of these names I see in the Bible that almost sound like the names in the Star Wars series? I think somebody used the Bible. I'm not saying Siegel, whoever the person did. I'm not saying he, somebody had, a lot of these names look awfully familiar that, that Star Wars uses. Very much almost like, if not, the spelling. Okay, unique. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. And Jezreel, that's in Bible. And Jokdim and Zenoth. Cain. That's an interesting name. Cain. Is it? No, I have no idea. I'm just saying that's an interesting name the first murder of a bible and here's the name of the city now, it may be someone else's but that's just weird would you really name your child after the first murder in the world how many how many men and, and and parents ever named their daughter jezebel or judah i mean judas keep saying judah gibna and tamnum ten cities and their villages Haho, Beth Zor, House of Zor, and Gidor, and Meroth, and Beth Anath, El Kikon, six cities for their village. Kurja Baal, which is Kurja Jerum. Someone changed the name. They got rid of that Baal, and they put Jerjum. And two cities in their villages. And in the wilderness, oh, we're in the wilderness now. Beth Arba, Maiden, Sikra, Nibshan, the city of Saul. <laughs> there you go. The city of Saul. Andrei, six cities and their villages. Whew. As for the Jebusites, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, That's an important name. Jebusites in Jerusalem from now on to the, to the end of the Bible. That's an important name. The children of Judah could not drive them out. That's disobedience to the word of God. God told you drive them. And Jebusite is, is one of the names that God says you better wipe them out. They don't wipe them out until David gets the throne and wipes them out. And that's an interesting story when we get to David and the Jebusites. That's how Joab becomes his military leader. Could not drive them out, but the Jebusites dwelt with the children of Judah 
That's disobedience to the word of God. At Jerusalem unto this day. So as you see, even in the time of Joshua, and we get to next to the book of Joshua, already Israel is not doing what God told them to do. Remember when we read those areas about uh, Ashdod and all that in Gaza? If Judah had done their job, there would have been no Goliath. There would have been no battles for David to fight with the Philistines because they would have been extinct. There would have been no battle we will read about in 2 Samuel 5. Because had Judah wiped out the Jebusites as God told Moses for them to do, the future and history of the nation of Israel would be quite changed. The Philistines become a burden to Israel because they did not obey God. And when we don't put our sins under the blood and we do not escape our sins and we live with our sins as such we see in chapter 15, we are going to, God says, be not mocked. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth that he shall also reap. They sold to not believe in the Bible. Believe in the word of God and they're going to reap wars and death and blood and David and Saul two main characters in the Bible are going to be in conflict because chapter 15 says here they are here they are and we didn't get rid of them and all our sins is because of two people in a garden one day and look 6,000 years later. And don't think just because when you die, that's it, my sins are done. No, well, it goes on. And you may affect your grandchildren, your great grandchildren, your great 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 grandchildren. It ain't lifted, it ain't done to Jesus Christ sits on that throne in Jerusalem. It ain't done till we go off into glory into New Jerusalem. What we see here is disobedience closing this chapter. The disobedience with, with, the, with the children of Judah, and we will read later, Lord willing, <clears throat> this disobedience will be trouble for the nation of Israel.